Okay, so somebody emailed me asking for some help with Kochi's theorem on on the on the quiz. You know, this is post post the week's work, so from last week's work. So I thought I'd do a couple of examples from the textbook. So here's what Kochi's bound says. It says that all the possible roots would be between uh, b between these values, and we'll calculate them for this problem number one out of section three five in the extended edition. So if we apply Kochi's bound to this, well. The m is the largest coefficient, so for this I'm seeing the largest coefficient of, is 6. And some people might ask, well, 6 isn't really a coefficient. But actually it is because there's an x to the 0. It's 6 times x to the 0 versus 6 times x to the 1st, etc. So applying Cauchy's bound, we're going to say negative 6 over 1 because the leading coefficient's 1 and the largest coefficient 6. And we have the negative. And then we subtract 1, and then that will be the lower limit of the possible bounds. And then if we do the upper, the upper one, well, it's going to be positive 6 over 1 plus 1. That tells me all the possible bounds will be between negative 7 to positive 7. And, of course, when we list uh, for this problem, it's kind of, kind, of a, kind of a basic thing, because if we list, if we use the rational root theorem, for it. Let me move this up. Remember the rational root theorem just says take take the last term, that's the p, and the q is 1, and then you go I'll list all the factors of of the last term, la, the, so which is all the factors of, of 6, and then over all the factors of 1, and we see that there's no way I'm going to get anything more than negative 6 to 7. So, Kachi's bound didn't really help us eliminate anything there. Um, something that maybe will come up that, I don't know if you studied this in an earlier algebra class, is René Descartes uh, came up with uh, um, another rule that says, hey, if you count, if you count the number of sign changes, uh, the number of possible, well, positive real roots will be Two lit will be the number of sign changes, or it'll decrease by two. So that tells me I see a sign change there. There's no sign change there. There's another sign change there. So using Descartes' uh, uh, rule, it says, "Hey, there's either going to be two positive real roots, or it'll be zero real roots." And that's for the positive number. Um, if you substitute in f of f of negative x and count the sign changes. Well, let's see what that's going to be then. That's going to become negative x cubed uh, minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. I'm only seeing, what, one sign change? So that tells me there's going to be one real root that's negative, And because I can't decrease it by 2 without going to a negative number, that, that's, that, locks, that tells me, hey, there's going to be one negative real root that I can use, that I can find. So what you want to do is when you do synthetic division, I mean, if you're not graphing it and using technology, um, try, try finding a negative. Try one of these negative values to knock it down to a quadratic. Okay, just, just some tricks that people have used for hundreds of years that are they still important? I guess so. Let's look at some more Kachi bound problems. So here's number seven from that same page, and let's think about Kachi's bound. So uh, let's see, I'm seeing the largest coefficient is 34, and here's the leading coefficient of 17. Remember, we take the absolute value. So I'm going to do negative 34 over 17 minus 1, and positive 34 over 17 plus 1. So that's going to be what? Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And that's positive 2 plus 1 is positive 3. So Kachi's bound says, hey, all these rational roots are going to be between negative 3 and positive 3. So let's see how that works out here. So if we do the P over Q thing, um, well, let's see. If I list, list all the factors of negative 10, so plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus... 5 plus or minus 10. And on the denominator, I'm going to do plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 17. So what this does for me is knowing Koch's bound, that's going to eliminate 10 over 1 as a possible factor because um, that, that 10 over 1 or minus 10 over 1 
is is outside that range. So all I really got to worry about for listing the roots is uh, the possible roots are plus or minus one, plus or minus two. Um, I could think about plus or minus five, but it won't be over. I won't be using the over one part for that, will I? Because that would be that would be outside the bound too. So really, all I got to worry about is. Uh, 1 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2. I'm dividing that by by the 1. I could also list um, 1 over 17 so plus or minus 1 over 17 plus or minus uh, 2 over 17 and plus or minus 5 over 17. So we eliminated a couple of couple of possibilities. And then of course we'd, we'd have to test them and see, or graph them and see. If we look at the graph of this situation, and I did record, I did grab the picture of that. I can see that um, the from negative square root of two to positive square root of two is is uh, two actual bounds. So those aren't rational roots, are they? So what we'd probably have to do is we'd have to find this one. Looking like, let's see, if this is one, and that's less than a half. I'm thinking it's either going to be the, the the 2 over 17 or the 5 over 17 is what we're going to have to try try to remove. And then we should end up with a, a, a quadratic that will give us those, those 2 squared to 2 answers. So hopefully that helps you use Kachi's Bound and do the quiz and and remember this someday.